Good morning, everybody. Welcome. You are here with Bright Lights in our Dress Up and Draw Flip Side Camp. My name is Renee, and I'm the Education Coordinator for Bright Lights. I'll be serving as your host, and my friends Lori and Megan will also be helping with hosting duties. I want to cover just a few details before we get started, and then I will turn this over to Mr. Reeker so the fun can begin. Because we're in a webinar format, remember we can't see your picture or hear you, but don't worry, that's how it's supposed to be. If you want to ask a question or you want to comment or reply, just use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. Just type your question or comment in the box and we will see it and we can relay that to Mr. Reeker or we can reply um, to what your question is or ask it. I also want to let you know that we are recording the session. We'll have a link in a few days on our YouTube channel to this Flipside Camp plus a bunch of others so you can watch it again or share it with someone new. Finally, we'd like to thank Black Hills Energy for supporting Bright Lights and general, generously sponsoring our Flipside Camps this summer. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bob and Lori and let's see what's going on with our our camp and our uh, our friends for well good morning Miss Lori good morning oh you have I, your stuffed animal you're ready to go I am ready to go <gasps> oh uh oh, uh -oh. Bob, Bob's still sleeping girls and boys he's still sleeping he's not ready yet can you help me wake him up on the count of three, we'll say, wake up, Bob. All right, are you ready? One, two, three. Wake up, Bob, wake up. Wake up, Bob, wake up. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so sorry, boys and girls. I've been working so hard on getting this class ready that I fell back to sleep today. But I'm sure glad you woke me up. Hi, Lori, welcome. Oh, thank you. Good to see you. So you have a, is it a ducky? You have a ducky? I have a ducky. And you know what's so funny? I have that exact same stuffed animal sitting over here. Oh, something in common. That's so cool. Yeah. Hey, let me move over here real quick. And I need to share my screen so then we uh, can see what everybody's doing here. There we go. Well, welcome, boys and girls. So glad you could join us today for this flip side class. Aren't we lucky to have Bright Lights? Bright Lights just provides so many great opportunities for us, and I'm thrilled to be working uh, with Lori and Renee and Megan today, and I hope you just really have a great time. Um, I am Mr. Reeker, but, you know, only kids at Elliott Elementary really have to call me Mr. Reeker, so if we were talking today, Bob would be just fine. Um, kids often ask me, uh, Mr. Reeker, are you a real artist? And you know what my response is? Guess what? we're all creators. Now, some people don't paint or draw or build a sculpture, but they might, um, you know, work in the kitchen. They might like to do landscaping. Hey, Lori, what are things that you might consider your creative at? Mm. Well, I love to cook and bake, and I especially like to frost cakes. That's fun to me. I like to decorate them. So, and I have to admit that I love adult coloring books. And it's relaxing, and I love that. I think a lot of people have turned to coloring, especially with all the hard times that we've been dealing with over the last few months. I think people are just finding their way to, to relax and de-stress, and I think art is a great way to do it. So just behind me, you can see lots of artworks I've worked on. I've probably created about a dozen or so paintings since we started isolating. So I just really have found my creative flow. And I hope uh, all of you kids that are on board today have also kind of found that opportunity to create. It doesn't have to be an art, but it can be in any way, dance, music, whatever it might be. So how about we get started? Hey, Lori, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our pictures for right now. Yeah. We'll get them back on, you know, All we'll right. be back in a little bit. Oh, and I, I apologize, my bed head is a, a little messy here this morning. So, um, but I'm sure glad you all woke me up because I'm excited to do this today. So Lori, we'll see you in just a couple minutes. Okay. All righty. So welcome to Dress Up and Draw. Lions, tigers, and teddy bears. Oh my. You know, I used to teach for Bright Lights years ago, and then I was very lucky to be able to come what's, become what's an uh, orange shirt member. Uh, some of you that have been to Bright Lights know that orange shirts are people that help to kind of run the program, where teachers wear the blue shirts, and assistants, camp assistants wear uh, the green shirts, and you kids have gray shirts. And so... I'm thrilled that I get to work with you today, and we're going to just really have some fun as we go through. I have some learning targets for us today, 
and you are welcome to read along with me if you are able to read. If there's an adult sitting in the room, they can read along as well. Here's our learning targets for today. Number one is know the art term still life. What's that word? Good, still life, exactly. So we're gonna learn what that means. Number two, understand objects are made up of shapes. So we're gonna explore what that exactly means, especially when you're going to draw your stuffed animals. And finally, our third one is, you're going to be able to closely observe objects like stuffed animals to improve your drawing skills. And this doesn't have to be just stuffed animals. That's what we're focusing on today, but you can use anything around you to draw. So keep that in mind as you maybe take some of the ideas that we're working on and do them on your own. We're gonna do a little activity called That's Me. I bet some of you have done this before. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. Now, you're not gonna be able to see each other, but after we go through this, let's talk just briefly about what this, what this means and why something like this is important. So I'm gonna read a statement and if it's true for you, say, that's me. Lori, are you gonna play along? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Here we go, Let, let's play, that's me. The first statement is, I sleep in a room with someone else. That's me. You might've said that's me as well. Number two, I am wearing my favorite jammies right now. Oh, that's definitely me. Nice. I haven't said that's me yet, but that's okay. We don't have to be that's me on all of them, right? Number three, I typically have a snack before bed. Oh, Lori, I hear you not saying that's me. I'm the same way. If I eat too late, it doesn't do me well. I have nightmares. So I, <laughs> yeah. have to, I stop eating before seven o'clock. Number four, I brush my teeth before bed. That's me. That's me. Yeah, I bet lots of people just said that one. At least I hope lots of people said that one. <laughs> Number five, my favorite stuffed animal is a bear. I bet some people are saying that's me. And finally, number six, I love drawing and can't wait to start. That's, that's me. me. <laughs> now again, we can't hear everybody's responses, but you know what? I bet a lot of people said that's me as we went through all six of these statements. So you should remember that even though people may be different from you, maybe they live in different homes, they have different adults they live with, maybe even their skin color is different, they have some very similar things with you according to this that's me. And they even go beyond these statements. So this is about celebrating how you are like others. Let's get going. The first item we're gonna talk about today is trying to define still life. Put your thumb in the air if you've heard the term still life before today. Lori, is your thumb in the air? It's in the air. Okay, so you've heard of it before, good. Okay, I bet there's a lot of thumbs in the air, but I bet there's some that aren't, and that's okay. If you've never heard that term, we're gonna figure out what it is. Now, will you think about what that term still life means? If your thumb is in the air, what does it mean to you? And if there's somebody nearby, like a sibling, or um, an adult with you, go ahead and share. I'll give you about 30 seconds to either think and or share. About 10 more seconds. I bet a lot of you have been thinking and turning and sharing if somebody is nearby. Let's see how accurate you were with your definition if, if you got it. Here's how I define still life. A still life is a piece of art that shows object or objects that are sitting. Now usually objects do not move on their own. So a still life also is typically um, indoors. It usually happens indoors. Lori, how close was your definition that you were thinking about? Was it, is it pretty similar? Pretty close. I always think of a bowl of fruit and some flowers when I think of still life. I think that's an excellent example. You're exactly right, because there's a lot of famous artists like Paul Cezanne, and there's mm -hmm. even contemporary artists uh, like uh, Arlene Fish who have created drawings showing still life, just exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're interested in still life and you have technology, you could easily go in and you can research these different artists and find artists that fit in into what still life is. So nice job of thinking about what still life is and we were able to define it here just now. The other concept we wanna learn about today, our learning target is objects are made up of shapes. Will you tell me what are made up of shapes? 
If you said objects, you are right. Here's some ideas to remember. You'll, you probably have learned this in school before, even if you're preschool or kindergarten, but shapes are flat, right? And there's some real typical shapes here. There's circles, there's squares. Lori, do you th see any other shapes on there that I didn't mention? Oh, I was thinking of triangles. Yep, yep. And I think there's even rectangles and ovals. So there's just tons and tons of shapes um, that we can think of. There's also shapes that we think of that are called organic. We don't need to worry about those today, but that'd be a good term that maybe you talk to an adult about if uh, you're wondering what organic shapes are. Now, when you go to draw objects, you wanna look for these shapes that make up those objects. Almost everything that's in front of you right now, whether it's a stuffed animal, a lamp, uh, a pillow, whatever it is you might have, if you look closely, you'll notice that it is made up of shapes. So you wanna always observe those objects closely to identify the shapes that you see. I think that's an important starting point. So many people just wanna start drawing something they see right away, but I think studying it closely first is really, really important. So let's take a look at a stuffed animal that I found online to help uh, demonstrate that. Here's a cute little Aww. stuffed bunny rabbit. Yeah, it looks like it's been loved and that's great. Most stuffed animals are loved, aren't they? So I'm going to use a yellow tool and I'm gonna draw for you the shapes. Will you start thinking about what shapes you see right now? Oh good, I bet some of you said, I see a circle, you're right. Look how the head of the bunny is a circle. You probably also noticed that there's other circles and ovals that make up the bunny's face. Look how simple that is once you start looking at what the shapes are. Now looking at the ears, that's not necessarily an oval or a circle. Sometimes shapes are kind of combinations. So I would say that top shape is kind of a rectangle and a half circle combined together. So sometimes you have to take those shapes and mix them together a little bit. For the body, yep, I bet some of you noticed, it's kind of a big oval shape. And then on top of that, we have some kind of roundish oval shapes that make up uh, the legs, the arms, and even that center part is kind of a circle. So, do we, Lori, do we really see any squares or rectangles or triangles in this stuffed animal? No, there's lots of curves, lots of curves. Yeah, and you know what, that's what makes stuffed animals so special because they're made up of curves. Imagine trying to snuggle with a bunny rabbit <laughs> that has a square head. That probably wouldn't feel very good. No, so it'd be like trying to snuggle a Lego. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to go to bed with one of those. I'm, uh, it'd leave a weird indention in my face if I laid on it. <laughs> sure. And it wouldn't feel good. So as you're drawing, observing and drawing your stuffed animals, remember, most of them are going to be made up of rounded shapes, like Lori said. Now, I made a video for you, for you to be able to watch as I draw a stuffed animal. So we'll watch this video, and then we'll go into drawing them. Uh, and then so you'll have that opportunity. Do we have any chats out there that we're, uh, Renee, that we need to take care of or Megan? Any questions? No, right now everybody's been answering. They have a polar bear that they're drawing. Awesome. Somebody sleeps with a Lego boost scrappy, which I'm assuming Ooh. is softer than an actual Lego. I'm assuming I hope so. <laughs> character. Yes. And um, yeah, and we just have people who are, they responded to that's me. So you've got people yeah. who are definitely paying attention out there. I love it. Oh my gosh, that's such an important trait as a student is paying attention. That's outstanding. Well, let's watch this little video about me drawing and hopefully this will give you some uh, direction as to when you begin to draw. So now we're going to do a little bit of drawing for you. Uh, any kind of drawing tools will work, whether it's markers, crayons, pencils, whatever you have available for you. Some of you might have drawing paper or copy paper, but if you don't, I love to use the inside of a cardboard box. Bright Lights is great inside of a Frosted Flakes box right there. Perfect drawing space for me to do my still life drawing of my stuffed animal. Now I have a few stuffed animals, but I also have little figurines. You might recognize that little guy, right? I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna use him as inspiration for drawing. So if we begin, we start looking, we see some shapes. Again, remember we talked about lots of stuffed animals are gonna have more rounded shapes, things like circles and ovals. So as I begin drawing him today, I'm gonna to be looking for those basic shapes. So let me use my pen here. Uh, the first thing I notice as I start to draw is kind of his head shape. It's an ovalish shape. And um, I'm gonna start by drawing in 
uh, my pen first, but if you do pencil or if you're brave enough, go ahead and start right away with your marker. I'll try to draw this dark enough so you kind of see, but then I'm gonna go back over it with marker uh, in order for it to really show. So I'm just drawing the outline of Elmo's face here. Um, I'm looking for those shapes that I recognize as I'm drawing and I tried to draw how I saw it. That's so important when you're drawing still life is closely draw what you see. Then I notice that the eye shapes are also kind of large circles on top of his head. And you can't see my eyes, but my eyes are going back and forth between Elmo, the uh, little character, and my drawing. I'm also, as I'm drawing, I'm kind of thinking about how do things relate to one another? What is the relationship? Sometimes a good word to use is proportion. So I'm looking at the relationship of shapes to one another and his mouth is kind of like a half circle. So I'm gonna put that in to include. Now, when I look down here at his body, I see that it is pretty much a circle, only it's a much smaller circle than his head. So that's where I'm talking about proportion, right? I made his body smaller. Then his arm is kind of a rectangle shape coming up. And then each of his little fingers, his little nubbins, is also kind of a oh, cross between a rectangle and an oval, and then, his thumb. I make sure I count how many fingers, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because I want to try to make it kind of look like this. And if yours doesn't look like it, that's okay. That's where practice makes you better. We never have to be perfect when we're drawing or creating, but certainly the more you practice, the better you will get. Now I'm going to move down here to his, his little feet here. His legs almost are like little squares or rectangles. And once again, let's say I better count the toes. One, two, three. Oh, he only has three toes. So I'm going to make sure I draw that. One, two. There's his three little toes that go up to back to the middle. And then the same thing over on the side. One, two, three. So there we have the basic shapes of Elmo. I looked at all the different circles and ovals and rectangles and squares that I saw. And I tried to think about the relationship of those shapes to one another. Now, one of the last things I like to do with a still life is I wanna make it look like Elmo is sitting on something. Without this line that I'm gonna show you, it kind of looks like he's floating in the air, which could be cool, right? Because you could put Elmo up in the sky or in the middle of a swimming pool or whatever you wanna do. But if I'm drawing still life, I wanna make him look like he's sitting or standing on something. So I'm gonna draw a line going across, Stop, I don't want that line to go through his body or his legs. And I continue over on the other side. So now by adding that line, it makes it look like Elmo is sitting on a table. Now to get the lines to show up a little bit better, I am going to use a Sharpie marker. I don't think it's always necessary to outline your lines and make them stand out, but sometimes it's kind of nice to do that. For this next part though, I'm gonna speed it up because I think it's important that you get to drawing here really, really soon, but I want you to kind of see how the finished product looks. So hold on, we're going to speed it up right now. By tracing my lines now, you can see Elmo just a little bit better. Again, not something you have to do, but if that helps for our, your character, your stuffed animal to stand out, you might want to consider it. Now I'm going to add some color. Once again, I'm going to speed it up. Again, color is not something you always have to add, but I want to give you an idea of the direction I decided to go with my coloring. So here's my finished Elmo. Now, you probably noticed I changed the colors. As an artist, I can do that. Because it wasn't important to me that it looked just like Elmo. It doesn't necessarily look absolutely like him. But I was using his shapes in order to capture 
the stuffed animal or the little character here. But then I thought as an artist, it'd be fun to change up the colors and do the colors differently. It makes it a little more unique, a little more different. Plus, I love the yellow around the outside because it kind of reminds me of the glowing star at Bright Lights. We're so happy that you joined us today. And now we're going to let you jump in and we're going to let you do some of your own drawing if you haven't already been doing so. I know sometimes artists just have to jump in there and get started, and I totally appreciate that. So Lori, did you find that uh, little tutorial to be helpful? I did, especially thinking of each shape. Sometimes it seems overwhelming when you look at something and say, I'm gonna draw that, but if you can break it down, boy, it feels like I could do it. Yeah, it's much more manageable, isn't it? I think the other piece too is, you don't always have to draw the whole stuffed animal. In fact, one that I'm working on right now that I'm gonna show everybody, because Lori, I know you're gonna be drawing too if you haven't started already. Um, I didn't draw the whole thing. I just draw, drew a portion of it and that's okay. You can zoom in and just look at, at it really closely. So yeah, I'm glad that you found that helpful. Yeah. Okay. So now it's gonna be your turn to draw. Let's just do a little review of some things that might be helpful. First of all, hopefully you've already located your drawing tool, your paper surface, and any stuffed animals that you have around you. If not, go grab those real quick and come back and join us, no worries. Number two, set up your stuffed animals in front of you. Start by carefully examining the shapes you see. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that because I think that's your first most important step after you get your materials. Carefully examine the shapes you see. Look at the whole stuffed animal and identify what you see. Then start drawing the shapes of your stuffed animal. Don't forget to add details like you with the eyes. You might even figure out a way to add the fur to it or, or uh, some of your stuffed animals might have a bow. I know the little bear that uh, Lori and I both share has a little bow in front. So that might be a great detail to add to the drawing. Don't forget it might be helpful to add a line behind the animals to show a table or a bed, some kind of surface your animals are sitting on. And then finally, if you do have coloring materials like crayons, markers, colored pencils, oil pastels, feel free to add color. Now, while you're drawing today, um, I found this wonderful book that some of you maybe have heard before called Corduroy by the author illustrator Don Freeman. It's about five minutes. So while you're drawing, we're gonna play this. Sometimes it's kind of nice to have sound in the background while you're drawing, whether that's music or a book being read to you. Uh, so we'll check back in on you in just about a, a five minutes or so after the book is read. Lori, are you gonna be drawing during this time? Yes, I've started on my elephant. Oh, excellent. Do you mind if we kind of take a peek real quick to see where you're at? Sure. I think so it's good just, it's in progress, right? Yeah, oh, so if you can see my elephant. Oh, yeah. oh I can tell. Oh, you're, you're breaking down the shapes. Yep. I kind of, and that made it a lot easier. And then I just started with the head because I felt like thinking about the whole body was too much. You got it. But Very now I think I can do the body. So good. Good. And then here's. Look. Oh, there he is. There's the same bear. Yay, yeah, bear, bear buddy. Bear buddies. And so I've done the same thing. I just started a basic drawing here. And you can see I haven't necessarily drawn the whole thing. Some of it's going off the edges and that's okay to have happen too. Or you could just focus on the head if you want to. You, you decide. So I'm gonna finish mine, Lori. You finish yours as much okay. as you can. And then we'll join back together once the book is done being read. Enjoy your drawing. Corduroy by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then, one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, mommy, she said. Look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. 
I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Cordor gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed and up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button, and off the mattress corduroy toppled bang into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. That was Corduroy by Don Freeman. Thanks for watching. I don't know about you, Lori, but that book always warms my heart. Oh, that's always been one of my favorites. Yeah, it's just so nice that it supports the idea of caring and loving one another and, and everyone just needs love, right? Everyone needs love. And yeah. I know a lot of our boys and girls that are with us today really love their stuffed animals. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Agreed.
Hey, just checking in with Renee, Megan, is there anything in the Q&A or the chat that would be helpful? No, I think, I tell you what, I think you have a lot of people out there who are drawing right now. I so uh, I think their hands are busy with their, uh, their markers and crayons and colors. Yeah, I, see busy that Al what? I see that Alex uh, saw the play Corduroy in Chicago. That was interesting. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize they had created a play of the book. That is awesome. Oh, I'm gonna have to look that up today. I'll have to research that. Yeah. Neat, I love that. Well, I think we're gonna do a little check in here because I think it's good to find out how everybody is doing. And I have just a couple of questions here um, for us. And then Lori, I'm, I, I want you to show and I'm gonna show kind of the progress we've made. Again, it doesn't have okay. to be done, right? Because art yeah. sometimes takes hours, days, I've had a piece that I did in college 30 years ago that I have yet to finish. And maybe someday <laughs> I'll, I'll pick it up and I'll finish it, who knows? Okay, so one of the questions you wanna be thinking about as you're drawing is, what are you noticing about many of the shapes you are finding as you closely observe your stuffed animal? I'm wondering if you're finding that most of your stuffed animal shapes are circles and ovals and rounded kind of shapes, unless you're doing that one Lego stuffed animal character that uh, I don't think any of us adults have heard of. But I'm betting you're, you're noticing that. Maybe you're finishing up that first drawing. You might consider if you have room to add more animals to the drawing or you know what, go ahead and start a new drawing. You know, as long as you have the materials, you should just keep drawing and drawing and drawing. And don't forget, it doesn't have to just be stuffed animals. Anything around you can be a subject for your still life. Hey, Lori, can I check in on you and see how you're yeah, doing? In terms of, uh... absolutely. Okay, so my, um, there we go. My elephant, I'm kind of, there's his face, and then now I've given him a body. So Lori, I'm having trouble getting my, uh, my, my oh, oh, there we go, there's my mouse. Okay, I apologize, there you go, go ahead. So there's my elephant. Well, here's, here's the, my inspiration. So I made some choices too, but I did get his body. I was afraid, a little nervous about the body. The head seemed good, but, and if I kept thinking of it as to individual shapes, that worked pretty good. I, I still, love it. You're doing, you're doing an amazing job. I need to put him on a, a table or have a surface. Otherwise he's floating around in the air. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and if you're really doing still life, you do want to sit him probably on some kind of a table or surface. But you know what? Let your imagination soar. If the still life is the starting point, but then you decide to put him in the middle of a zoo, you can do that instead, right? You can put him in any location you want. I think that's the beautiful part of being an artist and being a creator. Yeah. Mine, I was able to really move through pretty quickly. Oh. I was able to use my crayon um, to create texture because I noticed my bear had lots of fur. And so to do that, I use kind of, I like to call it controlled scribbling. You know, we've all <laughs> seen scribbles. As little babies, we all scribbled, hopefully not on the wall, but I know some of us do that, right? But yeah. as you get older, you can start to control where you put the scribbling. So instead of doing big, wide, you know, kind of crazy scribbles, you make smaller scribbles and you control where they go. And so then I created a surface that my little bear is sitting on. I didn't color it in. I just used lines to create a texture on it and then put some color in the background. So again, if you're not done, that's okay. You just keep working on it. Um, you know, be prolific like Bob has been, right? Just keep creating because I think that's, again, how we get better at what we uh, do all the time. Okay, I'm going to hide you again, Lori. We'll check in at the end where you're at on things. Okay? All right, still working. Okay. Excellent. Now, this next piece is more for adults. So any adults that are in the, in the crowd, um, go ahead and pipe your ears up and, and uh, take a listen. Um, and we're going to have this resource uh, connected to the video as well. Um, I think Renee um, has a plan for how this is going to show up. So if you need this flyer, you can do that. Basically, over the last three months, I have collected different ways, I've compiled different ways that adults can support uh, creativity of children at home. And so we'll just briefly go through these six and then you'll have the resource later. The first one is, remember when children are creating, as the adult, be a facilitator. Don't manage what they're doing. I think it's really important that we support children, we give them ideas, um, but I also think the idea of positive and productive struggle is really important. Don't answer all the mistakes and the problems for kids. Let them kind of struggle through it a little bit. Now, we don't want them to struggle to the point where there's tears and anxiety and temper tantrums, um, but some of that really productive struggle is important because beyond drawing and creating, it's gonna help them in life later on. 
talk about it. You know, providing some of those open-ended questions rather than just yes or no is really, really helpful. So some examples on here are what inspired you to create this? What problems did you encounter while creating? If you were to make this again, what would you change? What is your favorite part, least favorite part? And really what's most important that is why? Why is it your favorite part? Why is it your least favorite part? And then I think a fun one is what title did you give it? Where in your home are you going to hang this and why? So all those are really, really great conversation uh, starters. Remember this can be happening too in the process. So sit with your child as they're creating and talk them through it, but then also when they're done, have a conversation about what it is that they created. Provide artistic inspirations for creating. There's so many great things out there. You know, right now museums, galleries, most of those are closed or have limited uh, attendance uh, policies. And so go online. Uh, maybe you have books about art in your home um, or go out and see all the great public art. Public art's free to us 24 seven, 365. I bet a lot of you remember the hand sculptures that were around our city um, and some of them still are. Lori, do you remember those hand sculptures? I do. I, I just saw one the other day that had a butterfly in the middle. Beautiful. Yeah, there are, many of them are still around. I know they auctioned them off and a few went away to new homes around the country, but we still have a lot of them. And you might have seen the bicycles and the hearts. All those are great public art pieces. And you know where a great place to go is? Down on campus. If you're in Lincoln, the University of Nebraska Lincoln has amazing public art. But check into your city. If you're in Nebraska or even outside of Nebraska, what do you have in your town or city that's public art? That's a great way to go and describe, analyze, interpret, and evaluate the work. Have that conversation. Lori, do you know, can you take a guess? How long does the average person stand in front of an art piece of art and look at it? I'm going to give you a hint. It's seconds. How many seconds oh, do you have average? I'm going to say 30 seconds. Wow. You're close, but you're also just a little high. Oh. 17 seconds. The research oh, no. done. When people visit a gallery or, or an art museum, they'll stand in front of a piece of art for 17 seconds. That's not very long. No. No. And so if you take the time to look and talk about what you see, then you're extending the time and you really get to know that piece of artwork. The fourth thing is provide that space to create. Now, in some of your homes, it's awesome because there's a dedicated place, maybe in the basement, in the child's bedroom, wherever that place may be, that's awesome. But we also know that's ideal. So if you're going to not have a permanent space, try to find a place that's temporary, whether it's somewhere in the home. Or I think a great place is outside, you know? If it's hot, I know that can be difficult, but find a shady spot on the sidewalk, on a picnic table, someplace where they can create. And if it's gonna be inside or outside, either place, I think the child needs to be required to maintain, organize, and help clean up. Now, little ones might need support for cleaning up. I get that. but. Children take more ownership in that space and that creating when they have to be relied upon to take care of it. Fifth one, materials. Boy, you probably saw in my video, I use the inside of that cereal box. I think anything can be art, you know? So be open to what it is. You don't have to go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics or go online and buy art supplies. Look around your house or your home. Um, drawing tools, paper surfaces, objects that are around you, all those can be art. And some of that is just temporary, right? You might make something, maybe you have a camera or a phone and you take a picture of it and you put those things away. It's a great way to make art uh, using installation or temporary art. And the last one is displaying those creations. Location, location, location. Where in your home do, do, does the child and your family really value? And I think a key piece to this is where is it a safe space? So it's away from um, damage by sib younger siblings or pets. You just wanna make sure that we value those creations. Hey, Lori, did any of those that you just heard really resonate with you that you wanna highlight and really reinforce? Yeah, the, um, the idea of making art out of anything. My, my daughter, every summer I get her a roll of tinfoil of her own and she makes flowers out of it. And yeah. And she just loves that and thinks it's so fun. And a whole roll of tinfoil will last her all summer. <laughs> but I love it. Wow. Yeah. And I was thinking about where we put our artwork. She always puts it on the door that we walk in from outside. So it's the first thing you see when you walk in. It's on the glass. And for some reason, it just makes me happy when I walk into the house. Well, evidently, that spot is seen by you almost every day. So there's a certain importance to it, right? Yeah, yes, exactly. 
That's awesome. I love that. You know, traditionally people have hung artwork on the refrigerator, which I still think is a great option, but maybe the refrigerator isn't the spot that everybody values. And so finding that important spot and hanging that artwork is really important to do. Awesome. We have a comment Go from Dylan. He said yeah. he's drawing Elmo too, and another stuffed animal that he named Slush. <laughs> I love that. So love that drawing, it. that drawing of slush, the title of the artwork could be slush if you wanted to title yeah. that. Artwork. That's a great yes. idea. That's a great name. I've never heard that one before. I like it. I do too. That's awesome. Great. Well, adult, adults in the home, then uh, this resource will be available through Bright Lights, and uh, we'll we'll uh, make sure that you have an opportunity if this is something that you might find helpful as you're trying to support the little people in your home with creativity. You know, boys and girls, I think it's so important that we always, when we're doing research and we use imagery that doesn't belong to us, that we give credit. So you'll see here that I made citations for the little teddy bear pencil drawing that was at the top of one slide, that rabbit stuffed animal that I drew the yellow lines on top, and most importantly, that read aloud book of Corduroy by Don Freeman. You know, I don't own any of those images. Bright Lights doesn't own any of those images, but we wanna make sure that we give credit to the people that did provide those images. And you should be doing that in your own art, your own studies when you're researching things. That's really, really important. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed today. I know I have. Lori, did you enjoy yourself today? Oh, I had so much fun. And I, I'm gonna draw all day now. Oh, I love hearing that. That's amazing. Good for you. You know, our learning targets were this. We, we hope that you're walking away knowing the art term for still life. Lori, do you remember what we kind of said? It doesn't have to be verbatim, but can you help us remember? What did we say a still life basically is? So it's um, a drawing of items that don't move. Beautiful. You were listening, weren't you? That's right. Yeah. Um, and usually it's indoors. Um, you know, some artists break the rules. Like I think of a famous painting by George O'Keefe of a giant bone that she had painted, it was outside. So sometimes artists break the rules and that's okay. You know, if we're breaking the rules that endanger us or get us in trouble, that's not okay. But if we're breaking a few little art rules, that's okay. Because that, sometimes those are the best ideas. Our second learning target today was that we understand that objects are made up of shapes. So keep that in mind as you're looking at things around you today, this weekend, next week, that everything you're looking at has some kind of shape. And when you get older, you're going to learn that actually those shapes are called forms. Forms are three-dimensional shapes. I bet some of you have already learned about that in your art class. But right now, it's just important that you remember that objects are made up of shapes. And then I think one of the most important things is use those great observational eyes you have to really look at the objects like stuffed animals to improve your drawing skills. You get better if you practice. That's such a key, key importance. Hey, let's check in, Lori. Do you, did you make any more progress on your drawing? I, I did. Good, let's see it one more time. Let's wow. So I have gave it a name. It's Ellie the Elephant. Love it. And it's sitting on the grass. And then way down in the corner, you can see I signed it with my initials. That's a great reminder. That's right. As a proud artist, you should sign your artwork. That's an excellent, excellent model for us all. Oh, I love that. Good feel. I didn't make any more progress because I've been working hard to try to get <laughs> the class. But I probably will find some time yet this afternoon to do some drawing myself because it's just such a, it's a rela such a relaxing thing to do. De-stresses you. Yes. Hey, Renee and Megan, before we uh, kind of end here today, was there anything else in the chat that would be helpful for us to hear? I am checking right now. I noticed that, so Alexa told us that I think she is probably working with a sibling or someone because it says, we drew our baby doll, Chica mm -hmm. Linda, love that name, Buddy the dog, an elephant and a stormtrooper. Oh, there's three of them. It says that at the end then. There are three students who are working together. So that's a lot of things that they drew. I love that. That is such amazing collaboration. And whether they're drawing, you know, on their own pieces of paper or, you know, their next challenge might be, can they all work on the same drawing together and do a collaborative drawing? That would be really sweet. Yeah, and I think, yeah. And everybody else just said that they were working away and, one Jennifer was waiting for her brother to finish so that was sweet of Jennifer to oh, wait like that. you said when you're collaborating sometimes you have to have some patience I love to hear the care that uh, the many of the maybe the older 
children on here are having with their younger siblings. It's, it's mm. all about caring and loving one another. So I really, I love hearing that. That warms my heart. Hey, you know what? Um, we want to see your photos of your still life drawings. So if you have an adult in your home that has a Facebook account, they can take photos of your creations and then they can put them on the Bright Lights Facebook page where I'm going to guess most of you found the information to register or on the website. Um, and, and remember adults, you don't have to put the children's faces in the drawings if you're not comfortable having your child's face out there. Go ahead and just take a picture of the child hold, holding the drawing and crop out the child's face. We want to see their creations. Hey, Lori, Renee, what else do people need to know as we kind of wrap up here? I can't, I, I think you said it. We'd love to see their pictures. Um, and yeah, I just want to say thank you to both you and Miss Lori for being, I think it takes, um, you have to be kind of fearless to share your creativity sometimes. So I appreciate you guys doing that and, and for, um, and for sharing your drawing. So thank you. No, Renee, I love what you just said, because as we get older, we do get more fearful because I think we're worried that people are going to judge our artwork. And unfortunately, that does happen in the art world. But you know what? That word fearless is so such an awesome word. Thanks for bringing it up today. Be fearless in what you do. And even if it's something you, you're not good at, by practicing and putting yourself out there, you get better at it. So fearless. That, that's a word that I'm taking today that uh, I really like. Well, I think we're going to take a lot of things. Miss Lori, anything else that you would like to share today? Uh, no, I just really enjoyed uh, knowing that I wasn't drawing alone. Uh, and even though I couldn't see the boys and girls, I knew they were drawing along with me. And there's something kind of special about that right now. Yep. Yeah, right. Together apart, right? I think that's yeah. like saying that we were together in something we enjoy and love, but we're having to do it separately because of isolation and quarantine. So man, there, there's a... <laughs> You two ladies, man, you're leaving me with two really awesome thoughts and I really appreciate that. Hey, Bright Lights, thank you so much. You know, I know there's other flip side classes, camps, camps, that's a term I gotta get used to saying, flip side <laughs> camps that are available. So I'm hoping kids are gonna continue to join. Hey, if you're an older sibling, if you have older siblings, and even if not, you can join us. I'm teaching another class here in a couple of weeks. It's gonna be another drawing one and we're gonna teach you three different drawing techniques. So watch for it, I hope you can join. That is awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about what is coming up. Remember that you can join us here again on Monday. We don't have a camp tomorrow, but you can join us again on Monday. And man, do we have some fun things in store. We have a Hogwarts camp that we will be doing in the morning at 10 a.m. And then we're not done. Then starting in the afternoon, at one, you can grab your ukulele and come make some music with us. So if you, that sounds like something fun, go to www.brightlights.org. You can register for the camps there. Remember, they are all free, and we would love to have you join us. And I hope you had fun today. I hope you're inspired to keep creating today and throughout the summer. Send those pictures to us because we would like to see them. And yeah, I think we're going to let Bob and Miss Lori just get tucked in and maybe take another little a little nap while they uh, recover from all their creativity. All right. Bye, boys and girls. Thanks for being with us today. Bye.